What's going on, YouTube, and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy, Kevin Forte, and today we are going over the Washington Capitals. It's been a rough season for the Caps. They haven't gotten past the first round since 2018. We're starting to hear some rumors about this team, what may be coming next season, some potential retirements this summer, some guys that could be coming in, maybe guys returning to Washington, kind of like Mojo. We'll take a look at that today. So, a lot of this is going to start off with the post-game press conference after Game 6 when the Washington Capitals lost to the Florida Panthers in the first round of the playoffs. It was kind of expected. I mean, the Capitals, um, I mean, to be fair, they put up a pretty good fight in this series. At one point, they were up 2-1 in this series, and unfortunately, they lost three straight to lose this series in six games. A tough look for the Washington Capitals, and... I think this is a little bit of a, unfortunately, a realistic reevaluation of this organization. And I think we could see some pretty massive changes to the Washington Capitals. I've heard a lot of different things, so take with that what you will, I guess. But there's reason to believe that there could be a real shakeup there. And depending on what happens, could we even see some management changes at some point here over the next year? Um, so, you know, when you look at Ted Leonis and the ownership there in Washington, they're not going to settle for a subpar product, especially down there in Washington, D.C. The culture of the Washington Capitals has been, this is a team that can make the playoffs and even win a championship like they did back in 2018. So, you know, when you look at the Capitals, I mean, like I said, let's start off with the post-game press conference. And this was, you know, Alexander Ovechkin, a pretty um, upset and pretty somber Alexander Ovechkin, you know, almost brought to tears, which we don't see Ovechkin very much in that kind of light. But in his post-game press conference, he said, this team is a kind of um, fucked up situation. <laughs> um, and he was pretty, he was, he was pretty blunt about that. Uh, you know, he really didn't hold back, you know, when the Capitals, you know, again, this is a team that has not won a series since 2018, and that's when they won their Stanley Cup. So, it's been a rough road here for the Capitals since then, Ovechkin kind of realizing that, and then, um, you know, the full quote from Ovi, I think you see how we played against the best team in the regular season, that being the Florida Panthers. We have it, but we just blow it away. It's on us, it's on me, Backstrom, Oshie, Carlson, it's on everybody, a kind of fucked up situation, um, you know, and that's basically on his comments about not winning a series since 2018, um, and it, it gets even worse than that, because now that the season's over, and we're starting to hear some guys that, um, really some health updates, um, and two really big ones in particular. The first one is obviously Ovi's right-hand man since he came into Washington, and that's uh, Nicky Backstrom. Uh, Nick Backstrom, uh, he has an injured hip, as you guys know. Uh, he will never fully heal, and that's really concerning because that's, you know, when you look at his age, I mean, unfortunately, Nicholas Backstrom is not on the best side of 30 at this point. He's 34 years old. Um, and he's making a lot of money. He's making $9.2 million up until 2025. So he has another full three seasons on that contract. Uh, Nick Backstrom's injured hip. He will never fully heal. And he'll explore his future options. And when, I, when you hear that, that really raises an eyebrow. That sounds like, and uh, shout out to Stephen uh, Winnow for that, for that little piece there. But, I mean, that almost sounds like, is he considering retirement? That's really concerning because now, I mean, that is a critical part of your top six forward group just dissolved and gone. So that would be really a tough blow for the Capitals if Backstrom were to hang up the skates um, because of his hip. And that's really, like I said, you know, he's 34 years old and, and you know, there's certain injuries. If you have a broken thumb that you could never use again okay you know maybe if you're a shooter that matters a little bit but an injured hip that's tough because it's harder to work out right it's harder to skate well and and to be at the level that you need to be at to be in the national hockey league 
that could be a real problem for the Caps this offseason if Nick Backstrom does indeed decide not to play. Um, I see Backstrom as a competitor, and I see him as a guy that you're really going to have to take the skates from him. And I think that's kind of what you're looking at here. I think he's going to go into next season trying to play on it. You just wonder how long will he last. And that's my bigger concern. Um, almost like a Tuka Rask situation. Like we saw in Boston, he, you know, there was talk that he retired. Then he came back. Um, and then he officially retired when he said, I mean, he was out there and he's like, yeah, I, I can't do this. Um, like physically cannot do it. I think that's what we're going to see. Hopefully Backstrom plays the whole season, right? Hopefully he plays the rest of his contract, right? But um, I think realistically, that is something to consider. And when you look at Brian McClellan, who's the general manager of the Caps, he may have to account this summer for the possibility that he may not have Nick Backstrom during the regular season and, and hopefully for the playoffs next year. Um, so that's another interesting one there with Backstrom. Um, may need to take a year off to rehab his hip injury, and that was from Elliot Friedman. So now they're saying maybe he takes the year off to heal. He, again, he still has three years left on that deal, so he takes one year off. He'd still have two more years on that contract at, say, 35, 36 years old. He could still be able to play, but again, you take a year off in your mid to late 30s, there is risk there. Um, so that's what we heard from Elliot Friedman on his whole hip situation. And then it gets worse. Uh, Carl Haglin, who again, I mean, this one is kind of a just freak accident. It happened during practice. He had a stick get him in the eye. And um, and this is from Zach Leach. Uh, Carl Haglin will never get full vision in his eye back. And his NHL future is uncertain. That is really, again, it's like one gut punch after another for the Washington Capitals forward group. Um, I mean, they have the talent there. But you could tell that a not fully healthy Nick Backstrom and Carl Haglin out of the lineup, those are the depth pieces that they needed in this first round series. And I think that really hurt them. And I think that kind of that dynamic forward group that they had was kind of just taken away from them. Uh, Carl Haglin, 33 years old, has been on LTIR. Um, and after at the end of this season, he will have one more year on his contract. So going into the fall... He'll be on the final year of his deal. So the summer of 2023, Carl Haglin will be up for a new contract. And chances are, uh, you know, less lucky, I guess you could say, than Nick Backstrom. He probably will not play in the NHL after this season. Um, especially when you have an eye that you probably will never get full vision back in. Again, you talk about the just the level of... Um, you know, the hairline fracture between Carl Haglin and, say, a player in Hershey, that could be the separation for a guy to jump up to the NHL and take Carl Haglin's place. And that's the reality of, of the NHL. That's how this works, unfortunately. And I think that Carl Haglin could be another victim alongside Nick Backstrom in the Washington Capitals' uh, future endeavors. In terms of uh, the health of this team, there is some questions here. Um, but there is hope, and I'll, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, no, we're not talking about Yaroslav Askarov. That's that's another video. Um, so the Washington Capitals, something we have to remember here is looking at their, um, and this, I already pulled up the template probably for you guys, is the Capitals season since they beat the Vegas Golden Knights in the 2018 Stanley Cup Finals in five games. Um this team has not gotten past the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, so they lost in the first round to the Carolina Hurricanes. You guys know the story with that. They were up 3-2 in that series. Uh, they lost in Carolina in Game 6. And a game they were winning Game 7, Carolina came back. And of course, the former capital, I want to say it was Justin Williams, uh, won that game in overtime in Game 7. And uh, that ultimately was the last game of Braden Holpe in Washington. Um, back in 2019, or I'm believe me, I'm creating the storyline here. Stay with me. Um, then we get to the obviously 2020 playoff bubble season. Uh, they finished third in the second round robin. Uh, they went one, one, and one in that stretch, which meant they would have a matchup, a first round playoff matchup with the New York Islanders. They would end up losing that series. They kind of had the roles reversed on them from 2018. They lost in the first round in five games to the Islanders. 
against their former head coach, Barry Trotz. Again, this is the Todd Reardon era in Washington. Um, they would end up losing again in 2021 last year in the first round to the Boston Bruins, losing in five games to the Bees, and that ended up being the end of the Todd Reardon era in Washington. And as an Islander fan, watching Barry Trotz leave the organization and bring in his assistant to coach, um, I do have, I'm looking at this and I see a big dark cloud. I really hope that the Islanders don't have the same fate after the Barry Trotz era on Long Island, uh, but we're not talking about the Islanders today. So now um, Peter Laviolette comes in, right? Peter Laviolette comes in last offseason and they lost in the first round to the Florida Panthers this year, of course, here in 2022 in six games. So they have not gotten past the first round since 2018 when they won that cup. And this is a team that really in their playoff series, they have not gone to a game seven. This is the closest the Caps have been since 2018 um, or since 2019. They lost in seven games to Carolina. And that was kind of shocking. I had them beating Carolina in that first round matchup to play the Islanders in the second round. They ended up winning, you know, Carolina ended up doing pretty well that year, to be honest. They ended up beating the Islanders, they swept them, and they ended up losing to the Bruins there in 2019, who lost to the Cup in St. Louis to the Blues. So, um, you know, when you look at it in that sense, I think that the Capitals just, they just don't have the team anymore, and I think they've lost a couple of guys, like Marcus Johansson, who has now come back into the organization, Um. You know, guys like Brooks Orpic, who got too old and kind of had to retire. Like, those are some guys that they did, it did take a hit on their team. Um, and then when you look at their goaltending since, um, you know, some of these changes, that's also been a big factor for the Capitals, is this team just hasn't been as uh, good in between the pipes. And I talked about that, why I thought they would lose to the Florida Panthers ultimately was because their goaltending was really suspect all season. Samsonov has really struggled in the NA, you know, in North America. He didn't play great in, in Hershey. Um, Vitek Vanacek has been good, but again, he's a backup, right? Um, so just the Capitals just were not good enough. They're definitely going to clean out house in between the pipes. And um, I think that's going to be where we're going to start today's video because I think that Washington, who has, you know, the good news is all three of their goalies in the carousel right now are up for new contracts this year. Ilya Samsonov and Vitek Vanacek, both restricted free agents with arbitration rights. I could see Washington trying to trade Samsonov's rights to, say, in Edmonton or potentially even Colorado, as crazy as that sounds. They're, they're probably going to lose Darcy Kemper. So there'll be some teams around the National Hockey League that will will take a waiver on Sammy, maybe for a third round pick, maybe even a second round pick, uh, but I think more likely a third round pick uh, to bring in Ilya Samsonov somewhere. Uh, so that way the Capitals get something for Samsonov. Uh, kind of the same thing for Vanacek. I think they end up just letting him walk. Um, kind of crazy how they brought him back this year for what a second round pick and they end up probably letting him go anyway. Um, so that's what you're looking at there with Vanacek, um, and, v and Phoenix Copley, I could see him staying in the organization in Hershey. I mean, they brought him back. He was a part of this, uh, TJ Oshie trade back when they brought him in from St. Louis. He went to the blues, didn't play so well in Chicago. He ended up getting traded back to the Washington Capitals later that season to play in Hershey. And he's been back in Hershey since then. So I think there is a, a level of him wanting to stay in Hershey. And coming up to Washington every once in a while, I could see Phoenix Copley staying with the organization, again, as a third goalie. But again, you never know with these things, so that is something to look at. Um, and now comes the rumors of who could they bring in. Well, we know Marc-Andre Fleury is not coming to Washington. I think the Capitals have tried that venture on more than two or three occasions. That didn't work out. So who else is out there? Well, I mean, I, I, mean, I think... Besides the obvious that Brian Holpe will be a free agent this summer, he has been very, he's been injury prone. And that's what I worry about with a guy like Braden Holpe. But even let's say if you bring in Braden Holpe at $2 million, kind of like the deal he has right now in Dallas, I don't think that's all too bad. You also consider another guy, I mean, we talked about Darcy Kemper. Does Darcy Kemper come into the equation? I mean, I think they need to invest more money in their goaltending. Combined between the three goalies, they spent less than $4 million on their goalie tandem. Between those three guys, Samsonov, Copley, and Vanacek. 
So if you have to spend some money, maybe six, seven million to Darcy Kemper, I think that's worth it for the Capitals because that was really their Achilles heel this year. And there's really nobody in the pipeline that I think can come in next season. You know, you could consider Hunter Shepard, who's done well in the ECHL with the Carolina Stingrays or whatever they're called. Um, but I could, I think, getting a guy like Kemper, I think, would definitely be a huge addition to that team but again there'll be plenty of teams going after him so it's not guaranteed that the capitals would acquire him but that is a huge emphasis i think this year for the caps they need to get a solid goalie and i think they could do that in free agency or again you know they could look at exploring a trade route kind of similar to what they may be doing in trading out sam sonoff maybe they find a goalie out there that they don't have money for and they try and bring them in right so there's a couple of different ways that the capitals could look about things but i think they are going to look the free agency route they are a pretty um i would say attractive destination i think with that 2018 cup being in washington you know in the southeast i think there is going to be some attraction to that from free agents i think they could bring in a darcy kemper um so that's one thing. Now, a couple of guys on the... So let's go to the defense now. We're working our way backward. The defense is a couple of guys um, coming off the books. So Justin Schultz's $4 million comes off the books, as well as Michael Kepney's $2.5 million. I think they will try to keep Michael Kepney. I could see that being in the cards. I think they'd like to keep Justin Schultz, but because they re-signed Nick Jensen, I don't know if they will be able to do that. Um... Again, I think they could try and, and ring it again. But again, when you've had the problems they've had here over the past couple of years, I think they're just going to look for a new guy there. So I could see Justin Schultz leaving. I think they will try to keep Michael Kempney for what he's brought to the team. Again, as long as it's a reasonable contract, I could see them bringing him back. Uh, Matt Irwin, he's 34 years old. Maybe they bring him back. I don't think they will. Um, so on defense, I think you keep Michael Kempney and I think Schultz and Fire, uh, not Faravari. We're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, Schultz and Irwin do leave the organization. I think Michael Kempney stays. Now, speaking of guys that I think will probably see more ice time, I just mentioned him. Uh, Martin Faravari uh, or Martin Fairvey. Uh He's 22 years old. He's still fairly young. He spent the last two years in, in Hershey, so there is still reason to believe he can play at this level. You'd like to say that uh, you see Lucas Johansson come back in the in Hershey. He's been there since they drafted him in the first round. Yes, that is the brother of Ryan Johansson. Uh, Lucas just has not gotten to the NHL game. He's just not there. So maybe he gets a fresh start somewhere. I could see that happening. He is still 24 years old, but again... They've invested now, I think, five or six years in this guy, and it just hasn't worked out. It seems like he's been in Hershey forever. Um, I'd like to see more of Alexander Alexiev. Uh, he has looked good in spades in Hershey. Again, if you don't keep a guy like Justin Schultz, I could see Alexiev being a cheaper option there. And again, considering going into next season, he'll be on the final year of his ELC. Maybe they look to see more of Alexander Alexiev. Uh, Bobby Nardella also, but again, I think he's more of an AHL guy. You, you, you got to kind of temper your expectations with that. And, and obviously Dylan McElrath. I don't see him making the Capitals lineup next year. Um, so that's what you're looking at there. And also, I, don't, I do want to mention, I could see one of Zach Fucali or Hunter Shepard uh, getting the backup job next year for the Capitals. Maybe the Capitals go with a completely new goalie group, bringing in two new goalies, but Fucali and Hunter Shepard could be the backup, maybe overtaking uh, Phoenix Copley um, in the National Hockey League. So that's what you're looking at for the defense. For the forward side of things, for the Caps, um, like I mentioned already, you might be without Backstrom and Carl Hagelin next year. So that definitely changes things a little bit in your in your forward group. Obviously losing a top six center. You still have Kuzi, but still, you know, now that means that a guy like Nick Dowd and Lars Eller start to move up the depth chart, which is fine, but again, you're losing depth. And that's kind of where things get a little bit more hairy, right? So obviously you have Ovechkin, you have Kuznetsov, you have Oshi, and then to round out that top six, you have Mantha and Wilson. Again, because now Haglund's out, you have Wilson and Mantha. That's fine. And now your second line center becomes either Lars Eller or Connor McMichael. I don't see them putting Nick Dowd there. Um, 
or even Marcus Johansson. You know, I mean, again, I don't know if Johansson, again, if you're looking to win a playoff round, I don't know if Mojo being your second line center, as good of a player as he is and a fan favorite, um, I don't see him on the second line center spot. So that's where the Capitals start to find a little bit of, you know, a little bit of an issue. Now, again, if they end up um, having a situation where McMichael just ends up going to that spot, that's fine. But again, you're asking for a lot there for McMichael. I think they'd like to keep him on the wing a little bit longer before moving him to a full-time spot um, in that top six. And um, I think overall that bottom six is kind of just a free-for-all. I mean, you've got Garnet Hathaway, Connor Sherry, um, Nick Dowd, Johansson, Axel Janssen, Fialbi, uh, Joe Snively, Johan Larson, and then looking at some of the younger guys in Hershey, um, you know, Hendrix Lapierre, I don't think we're going to see too much of him. We did see a little bit of Brett Leeson toward the end of the season, a little bit of Cody Clark, but I think he needs more time to develop. Um, and I think that's kind of it. Maybe Garrett Pilon or Michael Vecchioni. Yeah, I, I don't see that. So, I don't know. I think the Capitals need some help in the bottom six as well. Um, but I think overall, I think the Capitals as a team, they just need to make some changes. Um, Johansson and jo- and Johan Larson, both, you know, just to make it more confusing, Marcus Johansson and Johan Larson um, are both up for contracts. And that's it for the Caps. Uh, really, the next time we're going to see some real change in Washington um, is 2024 when Mantha and Wilson's contracts uh, are expiring and then in 2025 so that two-year span there's going to be some big contracts um, that season is a big one again because you have Backstrom, Kuzi, and Oshi all up in 2025 so there's going to be some changes to the Capitals organization I think in terms of what they need to add, I think they're going to look at a top four defenseman just to round out some depth, especially if they lose Justin Schultz, just to get a new guy in there. Um, in terms of their forward group, I'd like to see at least one more veteran you know, forward come in there. Um, I don't know necessarily a name to put out there, but I think they could bring somebody else in just so you're not putting too much on some of these younger guys. Again, if they end up keeping Marcus Johansson, That's great, but I think you need to add somebody else there. Um, There is the potential of needing a top six center, which could automatically, you know, change that equation. They definitely need a forward. Um, And I, like I said, ideally, again, depending on if you think Johansson can, can take that spot in the second line, that second line center spot or Eller, you need to add somebody there for Backstrom. And, and I think the problem is you have Backstrom there, but you don't know if he's going to play it all next season, if he starts next season and then says, nah, I, I can't do this, it's going to be a weird thing with, with Backstrom. And like I said, I think the biggest number one thing for them is goaltending. So they're going to need help everywhere. You need a top six center, a top four defenseman, and a starting goaltender that can play. And considering you know the reality is the Capitals don't have much cap space, uh, their cap hit right now going into next year is under, what is it? What's their current cap space? So they have a little under $9 million of cap space. And that's without re-signing some of their guys there, right? Signing a goalie, a top six center, and a defenseman. And re-signing Johansson. And re-signing Kempney. You know, again, you start to run into this, oh, we don't have much cap space thing, right? So... I don't know. I think the Capitals are going to go for some wholesale changes. I've heard rumors that they could trade John Carlson. Is this John Carlson's last game in Washington? I think that's a little bit of a stretch. I think they they see him as a part of the core and you know a part of the solution, not the problem. But at that eight million dollar cap hit, I do see them. If they do keep Justin Schultz, they could be looking at trading Carlson and looking for another defenseman and and trying to cheapen out the defense, which again you do run some issues when you start to do that. So let me know what you guys think. What do you think the Washington Capitals have to do to get past the first round next year and even make the playoffs? Because my prediction this year was that the Capitals could miss. And they proved me wrong. But this season, it just seems a little bit different. I do have some concerns that the Capitals could get past 
even get into the playoffs, let alone getting past the first round. The first round. Again, a lot of that I think is going to come down to is Backstrom healthy? Do they get a top six center? And again, a starting goaltender. Who is that guy? That's going to be a huge question that Brian McClellan will have to answer this summer. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.